Welcome everyone to this Force Friday. Uh, today we are going to discuss Force and anime, right? Which is a massive, massive entertainment field. Uh, the idea of uh, animation from the country of Japan. Um, man, explosive, right? And I don't know, I don't know the business side of this, but I have a feeling that Netflix has very strongly helped um, create this, right? There's so much uh, anime on Netflix and I think they really helped propagate this to like a much larger audience, which is really cool, you know? For me, my history with anime, um, you know, I think of stuff like Akira and uh, Ghost in the Shell, probably two like really big ones for me um, when I was younger, you know, great movies. And you guys know of way more of the new stuff than I do. My most current um, foray into anime is definitely um, Attack on Titan. So I had been watching that and trying to uh, keep up with it. And damn, it's amazing, right? Like I gotta say, it's pretty damn amazing. Super emotional and intense. And I love the story. Uh, I'm gonna do my best. I think hopefully we'll all do our best not to put any spoilers in here too much, but um, uh, I have to say what I love about that show is uh, it's, it's an onion, you know, like you just keep peeling off layer after layer after layer and just recognize like how deep the story actually gets, which I was hoping for so much by the end of season one. I'm like, I hope that this is not shallow, you know, this is not a shallow thing. And it did deliver, you know, delivered, um, like many layers later, right. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and deeper and deeper. Um, and I love the scale of the show or artistically, you have very big characters versus very small characters and mediums. So just from an art standpoint, it has a lot of great contrast in it, right? Uh, yeah, I just love that. And that, you know, that leads to really exciting um, visuals. And of course, everything is like life or death. So, you know, <laughs> the stakes are always like super high. Lots of different, um, there's a big cast. So there's a lot of, um, variation in relationships and how they change as the arcs of the specific characters themselves. It's really, really well done. Um, my, if somebody had asked me, you know, to have a conversation about anime, which I think we did even a few years back. Uh, and I think about American animation compared to anime, right? As these two sort of main pillars of animation. Not like that's the only two. I mean, there's great stuff that comes out of France and Spain and so on also. But if I were to compare those two, I normally would have said, you know, anime, um, I don't think the acting was typically that great because when it comes to like close-ups and faces, uh, they do what I call sticker animation. You know, it's like you'll have some character's face and they'll just switch out mouths and maybe some eye shapes and like the head's not really animating. It's not really redrawn. It's not like the head's animated, you know, and the acting isn't really that great right it's not super fluid they're not pushing their money on like in-betweens and performance but man is the action awesome and and specifically visual effects are like spectacular right i was thinking ghost in the shell there's a scene where the main character is getting chased and i remember this guy i think is shooting at her and you see like these boards of wood explode from bullets and you see the shards animated and they're all moving and you can tell they're actually rotating. So they were drawn as in-betweens like turning. And I'm like, damn, like, that's amazing. I would never have the patience to do that, you know, to sit there and animate rotating shards of wood, but these guys do it right. Like they're so into, um, into that space where on the American side, I think, you know, more of the time, money and effort is put into the actor performances not as much the visual effects. And of course, American animation is more family friendly, you know, so the storylines are different. They don't have the seriousness or the, the heightened level of drama, I would say that typically the anime stuff has. So anime leads itself generally to a, you know, a uh, more mature audience. And I have to say, if there's one thing I'm happy about with anime for us in general as, as an art community in the US is I think anime does a great job of inspiring a lot of young kids and young adults to want to go into art. You know, I saw that when I had my school, I mean, so many kids would come in, you know, teenagers and young adults and say, you know, and I'd be like, well, what inspired you? How did you get here? And man, anime was definitely one of the top answers, right? So a lot of great stuff, I think, has come out of anime, a lot of great characters, a lot of great stories, a lot of great video games, right? And crossovers, just a lot of, a lot of amazing things have come out of this space. 
Um, so with that, um, let's uh, say hello to the guys, right? Um, how's it going, Ratunje? Hey, Mike, it's going good. It's very, it's going really good. Yeah, uh, today's a little bit different, you know. So yeah, I'm not a big anime guy, I would say, you know. But uh, I would definitely say they're like the top notch, you know, like the the people. <laughs> And uh, I, I've been like looking into like those kind of animes, like in my childhood, uh, kind of like Pokemon and like those kind of uh, animes, you know. So mm -hmm. yeah, Dragon Ball is uh, one of them, and I think we're doing it today. So yeah, no, great to great to do. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'm excited. How about you? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. How about you, Swanley? How are you? Doing good. Just discovered that my camera is broken, so you just see a happy photo of me today. Yes, <laughs> I'm in a <laughs> Permanent happy mood. Yeah, I was going to say you could have different photos of yourself with different emotions and keep swapping them out, you know? Yeah, and anime <laughs> style. Yeah, anime style would be great. <laughs> exactly. Just the same yeah. face, exactly. And then maybe just draw your mouth and your eye expressions, you know? <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm really excited. I, I'm one of those kids that's uh, anime inspired to get into arts. So, and yeah. still today, it's one of my biggest sources of inspiration. So, uh, yeah, I look forward to this, this stream. Yeah, you know, I, I love drama, I have to say, and uh, anime is full of it, <laughs> you know. Uh, yep. on, a, on, a, on a brief note from the history, I should have even gone further back. When I was a kid, I didn't know I was watching anime, but when I was really young, um, I used to watch something called uh, Battle of the Planets or what some of you may more know more popularly as uh, G-Force or Gachaman. Um, I used to love that cartoon as a kid. And then the other one was um, Star Blazers, which, you know, I loved too. Like even as a young kid, I wasn't as much into the comedic stuff as I was like the, the drama. You know, I really loved the drama of it. And Star Blazers was like a giant, soap opera you know it's like giant well, like star wars in a sense right like just giant outer space soap opera that some people i think have even said that um uh, what's the name of that film uh battlestar galactica supposedly is off of you know or was inspired by star blazers i don't know if that's true or not but that's what i've heard uh yeah so just like big epic you know big epic stories you know you know big arcs for the characters um again life and death situations <laughs> right all that fun stuff that we all love so um lastly before we head over um uh Swanley and i were talking about this before there is actually uh i think i'm not a pro by any means uh in the anime space but and feel free to correct us if we're wrong for those of you that are that are here today and you can put this in the chat but I think there's uh, different types of anime artists when they're creating a film. And one of them uh, is called Sakuga, right? So Sakuga are supposedly this rare breed of animators that do the um, action scenes, like they're known for doing the action scenes, you know? So the three of us hopefully would, if we were in Japan, we'd become uh, potentially Sakuga <laughs> animators, <laughs> you know, like just get as much action into those shots. I mean, I've been analyzing this stuff over the last couple of days for today, and uh, man, every trick in the book is used to create drama, especially in Attack on Titan, which is what I'll be uh, covering today. Uh, man, everything you can think of, again, scale, you know, force, motion, speed lines, uh, contrast and color, you know, the audio effects. We're not going to cover audio today, of course, but uh, man, every visual trick that you can think of is in there to just like pump up the volume on trauma you know and drama so anyway with that i'm gonna lead it to um it seems like mascot said soccer guy yeah um i'm gonna leave it to swenley to uh take over let me get you all prepped here you and uh Jay. so all right swenley you're all ready to go and get Matunje going here too for later all right swenley it's all yours yes all right so I picked My Hero Academia, which probably you anime fans are familiar with. And it was tough because there are so many like cool uh, action scenes in this anime. So I, I just picked some uh, iconic moments from season one. And uh, of course, yesterday, uh, not yesterday, last stream, 
uh, we talked about uh, how to improve posing and we use films, but the same principles apply here. You know, so you have, you need a clear uh, silhouette. You want the pose to be clear in silhouette, first of all. Um, you want um, variety in angles and you want to avoid horizontals and verticals. You know, those tend to be more static and like passive. And you want to use arcs. You know, you need those arcs of movement in there, those forceful arcs to uh, create energy and fluidity in the poses. And when it comes to anime, like Mike mentioned earlier, they use every taken trick in the book, right? They have, um, you have uh, like a cool composition, you have the, the lighting, the color, uh, you have the special effects, which they are like really great at. And then you also have the posing. And I think it's easy and maybe it's a good thing in a sense that you could you can hide bad posing or poor poor or mediocre posing with all the other stuff you know and you can still look at a shot and think whoa this is cool but if you literally pause the shot and look at the gesture of the characters sometimes it's, it's not that good you know it could it could definitely be improved for maximum drama and that's the aspect that we are going to pay attention to. Like, how do we improve the gestures of the characters, you know, the posing to increase the amount of, of force and drama in the poses? Now, I must say, uh, in this one, in my year academia, it's it overall, it's, it's pretty good. You know, I found some good shots, like they're using the arcs. But then in other ones, it's uh, all the characters are really straight, you know, like you really need to bend the the body and uh, draw those arcs of force in there for maximum action. So I have, uh, I saved a lot of shots. Some of them I already like drew some possible improvements for the pose. So let's jump right into it. Let me change the color so we can see my drawovers. So first of all, in this one, uh, pretty good overall, you know, especially the Nomu's arm here. We can see that uh, even if his body is off screen, there is like a clear arc of force going into that punch. You know, in a few streams back, we talked about um, seeing and drawing these arrows of, of energy. So definitely go and watch that if you missed it. But this one is pretty good. And if you look at All Might over here, is heading in the right direction. They could have bent his body more, in my opinion, uh, especially in this arm. You know, this is very straight, so we have dramatic angles, but the straight lines won't give you that sense of, of force. In order to get that, you really need uh, an arc. You know, if I even draw this, notice how much difference that feels already. So let's say that his arm it's more like that, you know, they have this, this arc of, of energy. It's like slamming like this fast arrow into the Nomus arm. You know, so this, this has a lot more power and tension in it than the straight lines. And it's because there is an applied force on that arc, you know, so it creates a sense of tension. So I did, I did this quick draw over. Uh, zoom out so we can see this better. So the main thing that I did is to um, push those arcs, you know, to create more forceful arcs in, in the posing. And um, in doing that, I think that there is a lot more tension. Like even on the Nomus arm, I, I push the arc. You know, so now there is more applied force on the apex of that arc. So there's more force and energy flowing through that arm, you know, and then you can really feel uh, the impact. You know, so that's one thing I did. The angles, like I said, were pretty good already. So I barely changed anything, you know, like by increasing uh, or pushing the arcs, of course, the angles shaded slightly, but it's pretty close to what was there already. So... This was close, just stronger arcs. And I also changed this arm, uh, like the silhouettes 
didn't read very well. You know, if you read this in silhouette, you would just see like this, this big blob. You know, and given it's not the most important part in the shots, I get it, but I think the clearer, the better. You know, so we can definitely move that arm around so we have clear negative shape. Now we have a very clear puzzle piece in here, which makes the pose read more clearly uh, at first glance. So that's number one. And of course, if you have questions, comments, feel free to uh, write those in the chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go to this one. So here again, pretty good overall. You can see um, again in the Nomus arm, there is this arc. You know, this this feels uh, very powerful. You have this like strong arc, which is then rhythmically connecting into the fist down here. Uh, Good four shape, you know, notice the uh, straight to curve design on the shape, you know, his elbow is sticking out. So there's a lot of power traveling through his body, through that arm, through here. And when you look at All Might, I would say it's almost there. Like I did, I did another pass and I I pushed him a bit more to the screen right. You know, so I, I increased the applied force on this arc. And I also bent his arm a bit more. Like notice that his arm, his arm was pretty straight. Now, if you look here, you just have, uh, let me do it with this color. You just have like these, these stiff angles. You know, it's a very stiff shape. It's asymmetrical, but it's not as fluid as it can be once we add the arc. You know, then you really have like this flow of energy through the arm. And you can feel how their punches are uh, colliding with each other. Uh, let's see what more do we have uh, with this one. Well, actually, let's go with this one. So again, very uh, this is very straight. You know, it's very straight. The silhouettes of uh, the pose is barely readable. Like if we were to look at the silhouettes, actually what you see is this blob. You know, this is what the post reads like overall. You know, and if you were if you couldn't see the details and you just saw the silhouette, you're like, what the heck is going on here? What is that? This is very recognizable uh, as a character. Uh, this is better. Like we have a clear negative space here, so that helps the post reads. You know, like even the way that they position this his legs down here, relatively his arm, uh, makes it a lot clearer to read. So this guy needs uh, some adjustments. And for this one, I did this sketch. And the first thing that I did was, again, um, bend his body more. So I put these, uh, these stronger force curves in the pose. And the only thing that I noticed that I did miss was the fact that there's no negative space in here. So it's still kind of tricky to read what's going on. So if I were to improve this even further, I would want to create uh, a negative space in here, an opening, and maybe maybe a torso would move over a little bit more, you know, and maybe it would be over here. You know, so at least then. Uh, it's easier to make out like what's happening. You know, I might shape out his arm to get a clear negative space. And that, that helps us read the pose in silhouette form. And I also changed uh, all my body slightly here. Uh, so let me hide this so you can see that clear. So if you notice in this shot, his body is it's pretty straight, it's very symmetrical. You know, it's basically like this, facing us straight on. And I thought, I think if we bring him off center, if we tilt his body a little bit so that now he's, he's facing this way. Now, I think that will be more interesting. Again, uh, a more uh, dramatic angle because it's a diagonal. And also bring the apex of the curve that is being created here, bring that a bit off center, you know? So 
uh, that creates more interest that it's being uh, like a straight symmetrical shots uh, of his body. You know, I think it also makes sense uh, following this arc that his body would would go this way. Any comments or questions, Mike? Nope. Everything's going great. I love what you're saying. I love the uh, the new drawing you did there. It's great. Yeah, thank you. So I have another one over here. This one was this one was interesting. Uh, let's see it in color so we can see what's going on. And I grabbed two frames of it. You know, this basically uh, like all my finishing move when he uh, like punched the Nomu out of the building. And when I looked at his pose, I'm like, I understand what they're going for, but I think they kind of like got stuck between two different ideas because on one side it looks like um like i understand i understand why they curved his his body this way you know like it's it's like they wanted them to like throw an uppercut so his body is coming this way and, and his arm is going up that way but then again when i look at the angle of his arm it kind of like makes more sense for him to drive force from his back uh over into his shoulder and arm like that you know and if that is the case that means that the, the curve should be at the back and then it should be straight there here at the front so let's see i did another quick sketch over here i think this is number four yeah, so this would be my first uh, idea. And it was also interesting to notice that the the body of the Nomu here is actually a big four shape, you know? So they definitely, uh, the artist who drew this definitely understood that concept. Like you have this applied force arrow coming from All Might's punch, and then you have this strong force curve at the Nomu's back. You know, and then the front of his body is just these two straights. You know, it's a four shape right there. So I think one solution would be to, uh, like I said, place the curve at his back and make the front of his body straight. So he's like driving all uh, this power into the normal body, right into that apex. You know, and also here again, um, this doesn't read well in silhouettes. You know, we just have like this big blob hanging from the body. So if we bring that arm out to create negative space, you know, we just need a big enough puzzle piece there so that we can uh, read what's going on with that arm. I think this would be one solution. If you want to go for the uppercuts, also totally possible in that case, it would be like this, you know, meaning we still keep the force curve at the front, at uh, the front of his body. But then uh, we, it drives force into his shoulder and then back at the bottom of his arm. You know, and I think I think this I think this is the better solution for the idea that they want to convey with this pose. You know, it looks very powerful and it kind of makes sense that, you know, he's punching it this way and the Nomus body is like shooting out, you know. So either one of those solutions, I think, could work. And especially when you look at uh, this shot right here, you know, this like is big finishing move. So uh, if I was art directing this, I would be like, come on, guys, we need a much cooler and clearer posing here. Uh, to show off uh, all mites, you know, in this uh, in this move, so I would go for this pose, and I think it would be a much more forceful and cool uh, finishing pose uh, to end this fight with. Uh, let's see, and actually, I want to draw one for you guys. Uh, let's see which one. I think let's go for this guy. So I grabbed this one because. There are some good things happening here. I mean, if you look at All Might's upper body, we have this uh, we have this arc, 
Now this is basically a four shape. Now we have the curve and this is straight. So pretty good beginning. I perhaps, I think I would add a bit more uh, rhythm to his torso, you know, and maybe even twist it a bit more for maximum drama. So his pelvis is going that way, opposite to his upper body. Uh, then you have force coming from his back into the shoulder and into this arm. I would change the angle of this arm to like be more down here. I think that makes the silhouette a bit clearer. No, so this would be coming out. And then this is very unclear. Again, what's going on here? And the idea is that their punches are colliding, but that isn't visible in the shots. So we would have to reposition this, these characters, you know, maybe like stretch out All Might's arm to be out here. And we probably would have to uh, reposition the no move. So that's it's clear like this. This is an important uh, like events, you know, in these poses. Like their, their punches need to collide there. So we need to make sure that that thing, that's the main event. So that needs to be visible for sure. You know, so perhaps we need to move the Nomus body to somewhere more over here, perhaps. You know, so this remains in the open. You know, so we would have something like this. Uh, maybe push his body even more so that that fist is really out in the open. So we have a clear first read for the pose. You know, and I think I think that would make the action a lot more uh, clearer. And even this guy would perhaps bend him more. You know, really work with those arcs and drive power from his back into the punch. And as a result, I think the camera would have to be placed slightly higher. Also, we would see more of the floor. And I think that will make uh, like a clearer uh, like action scene. You can see instantly what's going on and that it's about their punches colliding. All right. I think uh, my time's up. I'm going to hand it over to who's next, Mike or... Mitunje. Yeah, I think I'll take over. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let share. Hopefully, you guys are having as much fun as we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like everyone's into the conversation. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Quit that out of the way. All right. So, um, before we get into my segment, just a quick reminder, uh, drawingforce.com, right? Uh, if you like what we're teaching here and we're talking about, uh, Swanley Matunje and I all instruct at drawingforce.com and if it's anime or not, whatever it may be, you know, we're able to help you try to get to those, uh, to those goals. And, you know, if, like I said, you're inspired by anime, that's great. Like, come on over, you know, uh, I respect anime. We all respect anime, right? In that space. Yeah. And we'll teach you how to get more drama into your own work, right? Um, hit the subscribe button, right? And please share with your friends uh, this channel. And of course, hit the bell uh, if you want to get automatically notified instead of having to worry about remembering every Friday to come visit us. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be covering Attack on Titan. That's the one that I'm most um, uh, aware of, I would say, that's currently out there. Uh, so I'm not going to even go into characters' names and such. I'm really going to just stick to uh, the forces that are going on here. I have to say, as I did earlier, I'm really impressed. And I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's like the anime industry itself has also improved over the last 20 years. Um, I taught in Japan. I want to say it was 2019. So I, I taught in Japan, uh, and. I remember the students uh, telling me, uh, you know, this force thing, like this doesn't exist here. You know, like people don't normally really use this idea that much and understand how things are fluid and to try to get that, you know, further into anime. In fact, I remember one of the guys was actually a guy that worked for Disney in, um, in Japan. 
for their group over there and was like, yeah, it's really tough to like find anything like this or teaching anything like this out there. So it was really exciting to be there and it was amazing and the, you know, the students were great. But, uh, you know, just going through Attack on Titan in itself, which I believe is done by Wit Studio, um, just great, like great stuff, right? So I'm gonna kind of gently try to improve um, whatever I see here, if possible. Some of it, I don't think there's anything to touch and some of it we could, um, we could push a little bit further, right? So that's what we're here for, right? Let's push, <laughs> push the drama. So those of you that you know don't know this property at all, it's called Attack on Titan, um, and it's about uh, the civilization. You know, there's this own world that's created in this cartoon, and there's regular people, you know, humans, beings like of our size, and then there's these these titans, and these titans vary in scale, and they're kind of strange in that they they look like human bodies with no skin on them, <laughs> which takes a little while to get used to. It's kind of a little grotesque. Um, but after a while, it kind of falls away. Like I don't even pay attention to it. And they all have like different powers, which is kind of neat. Also, like different Titans have sometimes different abilities, which is pretty awesome. You know, I started thinking like, oh, my God, this cartoon is freaking genius. Right. When I started watching it and then I realized, wait a minute, this is really in pure anime Japanese form, right? Because uh, there's like Godzilla, <laughs> right? So there's lots of other characters that are really big in the space of the Japan culture that are like attacking the people of regular scale. There's also places in this cartoon where people are inside of giants and that's like you know, all of the like Robotech-ish kind of stuff, giant robot bots, you know, it's like Pacific Rim, like it's did an American version of that, right? So that's in there too. So in that weird way, it's not abstractly unique. Um, we've seen this before, but the skin, um, no pun intended, but the skin that they put on top of this uh, is unique, you know, and the story is great. The characters are great. The animation is really fun. And uh yeah. And like I said, it, at least for me, I'm like super engaged. When I found it, the first time I ever found it, I think I just sat down like all day. I was like, I just got addicted to watching it. Uh, so let's take a look, right? So we have this one uh, Titan here. And uh, pretty good. Could use probably a little bit of tweaking, I would say. You'll notice that the torso is very straight, all right? So if we want her arched over like that and preparing to fight, I would probably just arc this a little bit, even just a small amount, right? Get all this fluidity running through here uh, a little more obviously, right? Like this is all pretty good. I would probably just bend her body over, get her head over here, right? More, maybe get a better silhouette. You'll notice if you if I zoom in here, you see that little tiny triangle. Now let's remember something, this is animating. Those, right? Those of you that don't know much about animation, you know, key poses are like key moments in time of a of a character moving. There's like the main poses and then there's breakdowns and then there's in-betweens. So maybe I just happen to grab, you know, uh, an odd, you know, an odd moment. But um, if it did or it didn't, I think it's still good for you guys to see. Like the lesson here is uh, I want to try to open up that shape, right? That shape that's right there. And then maybe get her arm like this over here. So, you know, we're, we're shooting for silhouette, as Swenley said, right? It's like, I want to get a clear silhouette out of her. So maybe something like that, right? Is a little more dramatic than that, you see? All right, more hunched, more bend in the body, clearer silhouette, right? I didn't change the legs at all, right? So they look fine. There's another Titan, believe it or not. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> it's like the grandfather to Bigfoot. You know, especially now that I'm in the upper northwest of the United States, <laughs> lots of Bigfoot action here, right? Except this is like the uber Bigfoot of Bigfoots. Um, I had to capture this frame because just look how much energy and force is in here and how much curvature there is to things, right? Like total exaggeration. I mean, this arm would basically even snap uh, <laughs> with this kind of much curve in it, right? But, you know, when you're animating, you can kind of cheat. You can get a lot of force out of stuff to just have it move well, you know? So you have this, this is sweeping down into the other arm. This is going this way. A little stiff right here. So the shaping is a little odd because it kind of sweeps up like this and then goes straight at the top. 
I would have done the opposite. I would have swept the bottom and then let the muscle be here with a little straight on the top like that to get to the hand. The back is nicely going into the head like that. So, you know, pretty cool. You know, you got these clouds in the background. He's huge, this guy, right? So you just have him up there throwing giant boulders at enemies and, you know, this giant skyscape, which you could see is beautifully painted with very dramatic lighting, right? A little funny that the lighting is so bright and he doesn't seem affected by the light they're setting up. But the animation of this guy throwing stuff is really fun, really awesome. And it really does look like they studied um, like um, a, a baseball pitcher. You know, this guy kind of throws a ball like a baseball pitcher. And I think they did some time there to look at that. So this was the uh, thumbnail, right? It's one of the main characters. Um, it's Aaron, I think, right? Aaron Yeager. Uh, and, uh, you know, silhouette, yeah, so-so, right? Like uh, Swanley was mentioning earlier, like look at his arm is in the shape of the body. It's like trapped in here, basically, right? Uh, forceful, I mean, we've got the leg, we've got this, we've got his foot here, we've got the other leg. This could be a little better, it's very straight. Um, and then this arm, uh, again, it's animation, right? So maybe I grabbed it at just a frame that wasn't great, but I would turn him more, get this arm to pop out of the silhouette of the body. And then this one's really good, right? Really clear, you can see the hand pose, right? But I think I would take this arm and get it out here like so. And that would really push the rotation on his body, right? It would add way more drama uh, to how he's running, right? To really pump up the action on that. You can see there's the pose, right? It's another type of Titan, right? Uh, this one's, again, I would say in the middle, right? Uh, when it comes to how it's drawn. I love this arm sweeping back and grabbing that, you know, this like spear-like thing, and that hooks up into this arm. A little angular on the arms, you know, this and this are very straight. Uh, so there could be some curvature. I could just grab this in white and basically gently just pump this out, right? Like just give this an arc and that's gonna help. And just give this some arc here and that's going to help you know it doesn't take much see look at the difference between that and that you see very subtle but more fluid and it connects better into the other arm and then the body is really where i, I would say i would do the most change this is also a very stiff straight body remember last week we talked about um mostly like american um action uh superhero movies right and you can see the same thing, right? The fix here is to get some energy in those bodies, get the um, get the bending to occur, right? If I filled this out with flesh colors here, you know, just getting this character to be like this would make a massive difference. I would push in on the lower back and get that like that, right? And get more flow out of it, right? Any questions? How's chat going? <laughs> is that scary face? I don't remember the names of half of these. There's so many of them, right? So many of them. Ed said, is it something we often see in anime, a super detailed background with much simpler? Yeah, most definitely. That You would see that in Jap you know, Japanese anime or American animation, right? Because characters get drawn thousands of times in a background you just see once, right? So you can invest your time and effort in a background to add to the styling of the shot. But the characters are usually cell shaded right? Like you can see here, these characters have a base color and a shadow layer, and that's it. Right. There's no, oh, there's a little bit of highlight too, like on that guy's brow. So you can see they have little touches of highlight layer, very narrow, very small. Right. You can see on the on the um the device over here, right? You can see all that. So they have you know base color and then shadow and a highlight, right? But yeah, the backgrounds are definitely more detailed, right? And then the characters are more flatly colored, which is why the drawing really matters, right? Because you're not really rendering per se it's very simple rendering um so the drawings have to have you know a lot of form and force and so on so i believe this character's name was mikasa from what i remember um and she's fighting this guy here uh and i like just how much she's driving in like this right like you can see the curve of her back is pushing down into this hand we have force in her shoulder comes up to her elbow sweeps down into her hand like this and this guy is kind of falling down on the ground like this. So you get to see this giant applied force right here. And the directional force is her 
coming down on him like that, right? With so much strength. Now, let's see, was it this? So here, this is her still fighting uh, these guys, right? This scene, I have to say, was really interesting. Uh, so she's swinging around. This is her knee right here, her leg. So this drives into the side of his face, right? There's a lot of applied force, like right here, all right? So she's swinging her leg around. She's doing this karate kick, right? And over here, we have this and this. This is very straight. This might have... Um, could have been worked up with just a little bit more bend in here just to get that flow going. The same with this again, boom, boom. So maybe that's a little bit more arcing. That's not too bad over there, right? Sweeping like that. Um, but here's what gets me on this shot. So this is cool. In general, it's pretty good, right? A lot of depth too. Notice the size of like her hands compared to her head, compared to her knee, right? Like her head's very large and the knee is getting smaller. So you're starting to feel how she's leaning towards the camera, right? It's pretty cool. Um, so she kicks this guy and he spins in the air and you see this sometimes in like um, martial arts films, right? He's literally rotating like a helicopter, but parallel to the ground. Uh, so I took this cause you could see just how, and this is where the magic is of animation and bringing force in is this guy is very stretched out here and you can really feel this, right? So she kicks him. He swirled in the air like this, horizontally, right? Like a helicopter on its side, and then falls over here. And you can see the stretching, right? They, they really push to try to get a lot of force into this one, right? A lot of energy down here, a lot of applied, applied force, right? And then he lands, he hits the ground, right? He hits the ground and he does this, right? So after he hits the ground, he um he bounces like upward and very high i mean look the ground is all the way over here right and his butt's like here so he goes this far off the ground after he bounces so kind of applied force like sitting up here while um you know we have this directional force that's going like this it goes out the hands goes out this arm goes down the leg right so it's like a bouncing ball right ba boom right he hits the ground pops up like that just very dramatic <laughs> Very, very dramatic. But you know, when you're watching an animation, it's all going by pretty fast. You're really trying to get um, an idea across, right? You want people to feel something in a certain way. Uh, and that's really powerful, you know? And, you know, in watching or looking at the artwork of these guys, um, I mean, I know what it's like in my own skin to sit and draw and exaggerate and push and push space and push drama and push force and all that being entertaining. Uh, and that took me a long time to get there. You know, you go through, at least for me, I remember kind of going through my own emotional hurdles to have the confidence to do that. You feel like you're breaking your own mind sense of reality <laughs> as to what things look like and how they work. And, you know, these guys are doing it right. Like you frame through any of those scenes where one of the soldiers or the Rangers is like fighting a, you know, one of the Titans and, it's like those those frames all by themselves are just so darn dramatic, right? Because of the scale, you know, things that are typically hard to take on, all the forces. I grabbed this one um, because there's four figures on it and we get to see like how much movement do they have or not. Uh, the main character here, uh, pretty fluid, right? Like you can see the bending in the back over there. Uh, hard to see down here, the silhouette, but the upper body is pretty good. Like this is all curved. These guys, not as much, right? Like this guy's kind of stiff here. The leg's good. This isn't too bad. You know, the arm's pretty good. We got that going there, but the torso is stiff, you know? So if he's pulling off of that hand, right? If he's pulling off of that hand, I probably would have had him bend a little bit more this way as if there's real physics there, you know? And he's like tugging off of that like this, you see? And then have the out and out, and out of the leg, something like that, right? Same here, his hands here, you know, right off of this arm, you could pull him a little bit more this way, right? It adds a little bit more, not only drama, but realism, right? I like the legs, kind of very Spider-Man pose-ish, all of these really, because they're swinging. Same thing here, this guy's hand is here. So, you know, you could lift this whole pose up and kind of pull him in a C torso, you know, like this, right? And then get the leg up here, like so, and get the other one down here, like so, and then get the arm up here, you see? So hopefully that makes sense, my little rough doodles here, but here I'll try to add them in black, right? So I could see him being like this and like this and like this, right? Pushing him. 
And then here again, pulling off of this arm, right? So the shape, if an arm is like this and grabbing, I'm pulling the shape off of that arm, right? Like this, for instance, you see, with his head like here. I wanna feel that, that pulling that's going on, right? Okay, I'm almost out of time. One of the main characters, uh, working over the guy that was throwing the giant rocks, the Bigfoot. This is the giant Bigfoot being attacked, right? Uh, good forces in here, right? We've got, you know, S is going on, the arm is sweeping and going this way. Legs are coming out, right? Like this to this and this to this. So a lot of movement. Scale, this is what I was talking about. Like, look at the size of this character. You know, look at the size of the leg. This is his foot over here. So. He's like sweeping down in between the giant's legs and like basically cutting him at the Achilles tendon. That's not fun. <laughs> not for the big guy. Uh, this one episode where the main character, um, Jaeger, goes bonkers on these uh, other titans, uh, it's kind of interesting. It stands out a little bit from some of the other ones, and you'll, you'll see in a second. Um, first of all, great drawings, right? Lots of force going on here, right? From the back, through the arm you know, S torso, swing down from there to the back of the leg, you know, just lots of movement, lots of curves. You could feel the energy of this guy getting hit in the face, right? So really well done, really, really well done. Um, here's another one. So a little stiff in the torso, right? A little stiff in here, as you can see, more of an arc in the arms, arc in this arm. Uh, the effects here are like over the top, as you can see, it's like, it's like looking at a nightmare, <laughs> right? It's like mad creature with glowing eyes and this uh, cloudy mystical background, right? So long story short, I probably just would have bent his body more. You know, this could have been an S torso, so chest into hip, or he could have went with a C and went all the way around the, the back. So let's say the C torso would have been like this, right? Simple fixes, right? Simple fixes, guys. This is the main character when he's not in his uh, creature form. Um, I love the whole shot. I, I, you know, when I teach composition, we talk about centeredness and the shot makes sense to be centered. Uh, we have the main character, you know, standing here. We've got some force going on here and here. Uh, a little stiff in the legs, a little straight here. At least it seems like there's getting, you know, we have some bend in the, uh, the thigh going into the knee. And you see there's a rotation going on here, but he's relatively straight. So this could have been more, you know, more like this to this, right? Boom, boom which I think I actually have in another shot. Let me show you. Might be this one, no? Hmm, I must have skipped one. Hold on a second. There's one of that same character standing. Yeah, weird, I don't know where it went. Um, anyway, there's another one of him standing in creature form and he's in a very clear S torso. So here's the style thing I was talking about. Look at, um, Ed will appreciate this from an inking standpoint. Look at the very thick lines in this one, right? I didn't notice in watching the episode, but in going through the stills and framing through it on YouTube, I was like, wow, the inking style in this is very different, the cleanup style. So really, really thick, heavier lines. Dramatic pose, right? Like we have this, of course, sweeping into here and that continues into here. Look at the scale. Right, they're so good at doing this. This is not a simple thing to do, you know, as an artist to pull off understanding depth, right? Look, look at the size of her and they're about the same size, okay? Look at the size of her and look at the size of him, right? And, and he's cropped, <laughs> right? So that gives us this massive amount of space, Dutch angled camera, right? And we're like looking up, challenging stuff to illustrate and see the body in motion in that perspective, right? Looking up like that, pretty, pretty tricky, you know? All right, this is one of the worst ones I grabbed that I could find, like not good, not good at all. Um, the animation here is really awkward. The way he's running is really awkward. The um, posing is really awkward. Like, first of all, he looks like a giant T shape. So there's like no drama going on in this at all. He's very awkwardly um, uh, posed with the foreshortening and the legs in this shot really almost look like they're just um, churning through the same keys at like just a different size for him to run. It's like very, very poorly uh, illustrated. 
Yeah, and this is a big deal, right? Like this guy running at the main character over here on the left is a big deal. And ugh, this is probably one of the worst things I found in what I was looking at. So what could have been fixed here, right? Let's do that real fast. And then I'm gonna hand it off to Mutunjay. Um, <clears throat> well, I would have shown more of the top or the bottom of him, first of all, I think. Uh, and this shot just coming straight at us. Um, I don't know. I think I would have moved this a little bit, maybe shown more of his back like this and three quarter him at least a little bit, you know, and get his legs out from underneath his body a little bit more. So he's something like that. The knee, maybe on this one, you're going to have something more like this, right? So here's the knee, lower leg, right? And then get the arms on angles, you know, even bend them a little bit. So it's something more like that and like this. All right, so let's see what that looks like, All right? Immediately, that's more dramatic. I get to see a little bit more of him. It's a little more clear, and he's directed towards the character, right? It's like, it feels like he actually is running more that way. Here he's running like towards us, and the character's off to the left. So I think that that would help, you know? And at least I'm showing more of the back. So I would have done that or come underneath him a little bit more and shown more of his chest, you know, to get that silhouette working better. It's tough either way, because even here his head's buried in here, but you can play with that with color and lighting and so on. All right, this is my last one. On the other hand, this is done incredibly well, right? Like very clear force going this way. I like the flow of the reverse S going on through there. I like this uh, CS torso that's going on here in this guy, right? We have the C torso, we've got the S sweeping through there. Nice job in the legs, right? Nice job in this leg. All this energy sweeping, you know, through the punch. Got a strong C torso into the leg, into the leg, out the leg, right? Everything's moving. So thank goodness whoever drew this scene uh, had a better sense of force, right, for this uh, this punch scene because it's dramatic, it's clear. You know, you can see here in the graphic outline of it that it's going to read, okay? All right, it took longer than I anticipated. Um, Machanda, it's all yours. I hope that you enjoyed my little attack on Titan um, uh, assessment. <laughs> Yeah. Right there. Hmm. All right. We have seen a good amount of trailer of like how uh, Mike and Swindy can be like, you know, <laughs> like art directing the anime world, you know? So that'd be awesome. I'd love to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, time to pack, uh, time to pack your bags, you know, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're the closest uh, one, ironically. That truly really oh, yeah. is the closest. <laughs> Man, it's pretty far from me. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so I'm gonna uh cover Naruto. No, so yeah, we have done. Uh, we have gone from My Hero Academia, from like Attack and Titans, now to Naruto. Uh, yeah. So we don't have like much time today. So yeah, we'll just uh start with this one, and uh, Mike ended with the worst one. Not ended the, the second last one. This is I am starting with the worst one. <laughs> you know, so uh, I find this like YouTube uh, uh found this like YouTube video. It's a uh, a fight between Naruto um Bur uh, Baruto. Yeah, that's what his name is. And uh, let's see what his what's his name is like. Uh, Mamoshiki, right? <laughs> I I try to keep remembering it, but I, I keep forgetting it. You know, so. It's a fight between Naruto, Baruto, Baruto um, Momoshiki, and uh, Sasuke, right? Uh, these, like, four characters in the video. Uh, yeah, so, see, like, again, w one of the things that I, I, that I always and you should remember is, like, uh, when the poses are getting stiffer is when the torso is, like, very straight, okay? Uh, and, again, the torso is the main one, you know, just, um, you know, we are teaching hierarchy and, like, the torso is the main guy. <laughs> you want to get that right. And then again, like attach arms and legs and it's like, uh, it will be done, you know, it will be like more uh, dramatic. So yeah, let, let's start with this one. You know, so you can uh, start with that, getting some white on top. Um, all right, so again, you know, we'll just like start with like bending the torso. Again, you know, you will see just by doing that, we just get like much dramatic, uh, dramatic function. You know? You see what, what the word I use here? I, I use the word function. So again, if the torso is straighter, uh, you're not seeing like which part is bending, okay? So is the back bending or is the, like the uh, like the chest pushing out, right? 
And just by doing that, you know, you're getting like a much stronger sense of, oh, something's happening, right? Like that, that, that torso, that, that body part is like, like lively, okay? Because it's like doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, just like I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this, right? And uh, there are like more ways to do it, by the way, because uh, this is Naruto, Naruto, you know, and in and like anime, they like really run in this like kind of, they, 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 they straight out their arms like this, you know, <laughs> at the back and they run because he's a ninja, right? So uh, there are like a couple ways to do it. Now, if you're just talking about like just making it forceful, there could be like this thing where like you bend the torso, right? And then you can like push out the legs, which is like this, and then you can, you can make it like that. See, like much more forceful. Uh, you you can push out. Uh, yeah, I would say it wouldn't be like much stronger, uh, much stronger silhouette. So I can push this arm out this way, and I can push that backwards, right? So it would be a much stronger like pose, right? And you can like get that get that shirt flowing, that that clothing, uh, flowing with the wind right there. Okay, this is a standard way to, standard way to do it, right? But if you're just like really into the show style. Right, there's another way to do it where uh, you, you can bend him like more forward. You know? so I'm gonna, uh, I'm just gonna give him a little, little bit more bend, I would say, right? Kind, kind of keeping him straight. I'm just like trying, like, uh, giving him like more bend, but I would say, you know, with those arms, I'm just like really trying to push it back like this, okay? So it may be like this, maybe like that, because they're like running like this, they're running like this, like ninja there. Uh, I mean, yeah, I can do this, and that would be like a much clearer silhouette. But to make it just like much more better, I would just say this arm can be like coming out towards us a little bit, and that arm could be going like this, right? So in this, in the same sense, so you are getting both the arms, but you're also like uh, worrying about, uh, you're also like caring about the silhouette, right? And then the the, the clothes can be flowing, and then this these uh, legs can be definitely be more dramatic for sure, right? So getting there getting here while doing this kind of stuff i always try to like match up the match up my, my my speed of drawing with what i'm thinking you know that that's really what's getting up in there right uh all right so yeah like two ways standard way to do it which would be this right and then in uh like the show style right <laughs> so you want to like get that that hand back in there and just like kind of running in that show style okay all right um there's this one. I wanna. I wanna do this one here, because uh, again, it's two characters. Okay, and uh, when there's like two characters, you're not just like worrying about uh, the forces of one guy, like like the one character, but you're worrying about the forces of the other guy, like how that uh, force of the one guy is affecting the other. Right? Uh, which is, uh, I would say, yeah, you know, one one of my favorite uh, things to do. You know, which is like, okay, how how one is affecting the other, okay? So here you can see it, it's very weak, you know? It's it's very weak here. Uh, she, uh, he or she, <laughs> she, she's punching her, uh, punching him and, you know, he's like very stiff again. Again, it's, it's like the torso. The magic lies into the torso right there, okay? So what you want to do is like, you want to push him back a little bit, okay? So I, want, I really want to like get that, get that feel of the punch right there, okay? So just doing this, right? And where this is coming from, by the way, uh, just just think simple, okay? Whenever you like, you want to do something like that. Let's say you're doing a posing, you're doing an illustration or something like that. Uh, I know, like like my uh, friends are like crazy, crazy for anime, you know, and they always like kind of like start to chatter about it, you know. And I always feel lonely, <laughs> you know. Uh, but the thing is, you know. So, so uh, you know, the thing is, you might be doing the like some sort of fan art or illustration or something like that, or maybe you're doing it for your own OG characters. What you want to do is like think very simple. Don't think about like two characters. Think about like arrows or the forces. Okay. So this guy is punching. Okay. So you're you're doing this arrow, which is a directional force, right? Sorry, an applied force, right? Because you're applying a force, and then this guy is gonna get affected by it, right? So which is which is doing this. So one is affecting the other, okay? Uh, and and right now, this is not like that. This is very straight on and it's like this, right? So it's almost like this this guy is like punching, but but that other guy is not getting affected. Okay. So that is that is how this idea is coming up, right? So so that is why you see that direction force right there. That is why I'm like pushing this guy's force up. 
and then uh we want to like draw the effects of it so the the neck could be right here i want to give him like a like a little neck there so the neck could be right here as well right and he he might be like stopping that right? so so that that could be right there and see I'm, I'm doing this very fast like you can spend like some time with it and uh you, you can definitely get like more more insights onto that like okay uh let me place a head a little bit there or maybe let uh, let me place that arm right there okay so you can do multiple iterations uh multiple iterations right right there um here here i'm just like doing one okay so his whole body is like getting affected right and his jacket is like kind of like flowing there right there and then again this guy could be much more just even to that right like he's indulging his like whole, whole body right like this guy can just be indulging his whole body to into him you know like doing it there so um just want to get the punch first right so hand so he uh baruda is chopping the hand of momoshiki right there yeah momoshiki right there and then I, I can bend bend uh I can bend the body here as well, right? So he's doing this. This could be like that again. Now, uh when you're bending the body of this guy, um, uh, it doesn't feel right, right? It doesn't feel like, oh that that, that punches like, like we are not getting the length of that arm, right? So we can we can also make the arm bend, okay, right there. Or let let's keep the face right there only, okay. What we're just gonna do is like bend the body a little bit more. So it could be like this. Now the hand could be like much more like here. So it's like out of the out of the body. Now, yeah, it cannot be out of the body because of like all the hair thing. Uh, but still, you know, at least it will be out of the body. So you just wanna like make the best possible combination when you're like looking for the silhouette, as like Mike and Friendly mentioned. Right? We wanna get one again. And then you know that that could be the punch right there. So yeah, again, uh, and then there's this big like floating, kind of like following this right right there. And see, I, I'm I'm like like indulging the whole torso right there. Right? And then that that could be like the big hair right there, kind of like flowing. Uh, we we can uh we can kind of in a sneaky way. <laughs> Like an intelligent way, we can make this hand appear into the silhouette. So I, I can make the hair kind of like flowing this way a little bit more, okay? Instead of just like going down. So that would uh, also show us like more wind, like kind of blowing there. That would make the shot more dramatic as well. Okay. And then, yeah, that could be like the whole costume or whatever she's wearing. Right? All right. I think... Uh, I think we're out of time now. Okay. All right, guys. You know, so hope you enjoyed a little bit of Naruto <laughs> and some forceful, forceful posing with it. And uh, we're going to conclude the stream now. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Martin J. <clears throat> All right, guys. Um, we hope that you enjoyed today's um, conversation around anime and force and anime. Uh, yeah, it seems like uh, a lot of great conversation. I uh, love the passion that you guys have towards this uh, space. We'll probably be doing film stuff for maybe another week or two, and then we'll go back to our regular programming. So uh, again, if you have any suggestions, always feel free to email me. I'm just mike at drawingforce.com. Um, otherwise, have a great weekend. Go watch some anime. If you haven't started watching Attack on Titan yet, then go do so. Uh, it's life-changing. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys then. All right. Take care. Thanks again, Swenley and Ritunje. And uh, we'll all see you next week. Yes, see you guys. See you guys. All right. That was good. We got